your destiny, there is a man God put that will execute it. I came as that man. I'd like us to read this from the New Living Translation. What is honor? In the absence of honor, people will suffer. And where the culture of honor is not observed, the grace of the Spirit will be withdrawn from such place. Where there is no culture of honor. Let me show you. Honor the Lord with all your words. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Honor the Lord with your wealth and the best part of everything that you produce. Then he will fill your bands with grain and your vast will overflow with good wine. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. See that. You know, God was being very agricultural here. Right? As at that time, their major or probably only source of income is through, through agriculture. So God said, then he will fill your bones with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. In other words, God is saying, if you give me, is an honor. Not whether you like it or not, whether it's convenient or, con no, 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 no. And because we don't understand this process of honor, that is why we can be in the church for a long time and still not see the hand of God in the area of wealth. Because the scriptures cannot be broken. Come with me very quickly. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse number 30. You see this thing called honor that we neglect in the church is what is killing the church. You see this thing, listen to me. You see what they call honor that we neglect in the church is the biggest problem of the church. It's the biggest problem of the Christian. Please see that. It's the biggest problem. For example, in church, we are taught to honor our father and our mother so that our day will be long. But there are, listen, I can understand something, eh? He didn't say honor your father whether he's a Christian or an unbeliever. He didn't say honor your father only when he trains you well. He didn't say honor your father only when he's a good man. He said honor him at all times. It's honor. And this honor here had to do with both your spiritual parents and your physical, your biological parents. But unfortunately, today in the church, what is called honor has died in the church. And that is why people lack honor. It says, Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, Be it far from me, for them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. You see a big problem here. This is God reacting. He said, those that honor me, I will honor them. He said, but you see those that despise me. He said, they will suffer. When you see people suffering in the church, Number one thing, apart from any devil, when the process of honor is in place, the devil does not have access. Honor the father and the mother, that they will belong. Honor the Lord your God with your what? Your wealth. Your substance, your wealth. Why? God is not rich. 
Does that not sound, sound crazy? God is not wealthy. God is not broke. He owns everything. Yes, and the owner of it all says, come, give me. Have you ever borrowed somebody money before? You gave money to the person. Then it was time to collect the money back. As soon as you ask, the person will just frown the face, ready to fight. Huh? The question is this, will you borrow the person money next time? Somebody said, that's even the dream. Do you understand? Some of them, as you come to ask them of your money, it becomes like fight. Now because of money, you're doing something. Oh yeah, take, take the money. That's how some people do to God. It's like you are pressured to give your fresh fruit or your tithe. You don't even know what we are dealing with. He said, those who honor me, I will honor. Now hear what he said. He said, in Psalm chapter 50, verse 10, 11, 12. Let me show you something. Sit down for a moment. Sit down. Are you sure you are with me? For every beast of the forest is mine. And the cattle upon a, a thousand hills. Verse 11. I know all the fowls of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are who? Belongs to who? If I were hungry, I would not tell thee. For the word is mine and the fullness thereof. So God says, how yes, if you come to your house, the highest you will kill his car. God says, if I'm hungry, I will not tell you. You are too small for me to take permission from. I will go to the forest. I will command buffalo. I will command bulls, lion. They will come. So God is not broke. God is not rich. God is not wealthy. Everything belongs to him. Everything. Do you know in, 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 in the Western world, if, if, you, if, you, if, you, if they give you a loan and somehow you don't pay it, you will never be able to be able to secure loan again. You will not be credit worthy again. The same way when God gives you what he owns and you find it difficult to honor him, he will cut off his supply. He's the source of everything. He's the source. He said if you were to be, huh? if you were to be hungry, he will not seek for your permission. Does that mean anything to you? <laughs> Including your life. <laughs> Are you aware? Yes, when he says game over, that's all. When he says live and not die, nobody kills you. Nobody can stop you. If there is anyone that you should never play with, it's God. He said, honor that father and that mother so that they will belong. There are people who are suffering, who die on time. Because they dishonor their spiritual parents, they dishonor their biological parents, and they are prayerful, but they are stranded. Because they don't know what honor is. When you give to him, you give him in honor, Father, thank you. There were two young men in the Bible from the same father. In Genesis chapter 4, if we begin to read from verse 2, and she again bore his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of, of, of sheep, but Cain was a, a tiller of the ground. Verse 3, these two things they had to do with a Greek. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the, of the fruit of the ground an offering unto who? The Lord. Verse 4, and Abel Two people brought offering. And Eber, he also brought of the firstlings. 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 First fruit. Of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Eber and to his offering. The next verse, the Lord had respect. In other words, there are givings that the Lord it's on the altar. You came to drop it on the altar. But to the Lord, it's not useful. It will not produce result because there is no honor. That's why I tell many of you, you come here to drop offering, you will squeeze it. 
and drop to which God you are giving? To which God? You're dropping money, you are squeezing it. Every time you squeeze money and bring it to the altar, you are not giving it to my God. Will the church use it? Yes, they will use it, but it will not be useful to you in return. He said to them that dishonor me, I will dishonor. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance did what? Fair. Now when you go to the book of Hebrew, the Bible said, through faith, or by faith, that Abel offered a more excellent, more excellent. In other words, what is faith? The Bible said, faith comes by hearing, and hearing of the word of God. So he learned because his father taught them. One decided to adhere to the teachings of the father, and the other one decided to do anyhow as he liked. And God came and said, well, the scriptures cannot be broken. Those that honor me, I will honor. Those that despise, those that dishonor me, I will greatly despise and likely esteem. So for God to honor a man, Cain knew the meaning. He became jealous. Because for God to honor you, it means you have entered into dimensions. For God to honor a man, He can't watch to see that glory. He killed the brother. The beginning of suffering in any man's life is disobedient. Is what? Disobedient. Disobedient. Why is this important? Sometimes, oh, some of you, you have made up your mind. Uh, how can they ask somebody to give first fruit? Listen, how you begin the year determines how you will run with the year. How you start the year determines how you will run with the year. That determines how the year will run with you. So if you like, say, oh, all this scripture they are preaching is, is in Old Testament. There is nothing like that in New Testament. There is, who told you? Jesus spoke about tithe. He didn't condemn it. In the book of Romans, we'll get there. The New, the New Testament spoke about first fruit. The one that is easy for you to do is the one you want to hear. But as long as the Lord remains, the scriptures cannot be broken. Honor is a seed you sow and you, re you reap. Where there is no honor, God will not show up. He's a God of honor. There are people that have been in Lagos for a long time. They can't prosper because year to year they come to church. When this teaching comes, that they, 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 they cover their ears. When this teaching comes, they cover their ear. No, I will not. How can they say somebody will just go and walk? A whole first fruit. I will not carry everything and give to church. No. Why? That's your foundation. And that determines how you will run. The foundation determines how you will build on it. Can I hear them, somebody? Yeah. You say, oh, but it's Old Testament. I used to ask one very simple question. That means Old Testament means in those days God was a small God in order to get sense. But for New Testament, God don't grow. He can't get sense. Is that not what it means? No, that's what you are trying to say. He said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. I am the Lord your God. I change it not. Even if any other thing is not proven, seven times his word has been tried in the fire and seven times they came out pure. So if you are saying Old Testament is past, you are saying that yes, the God was, God was not, uh, God was not current but now God has advanced. God does not improve. God does not improve. God does not improve. He is the same yesterday, the same today, 
the same forever. Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 14. Let me show you some scriptures as we go. Ezekiel 44, verse 14. But I will make them keepers of the charge of the house for all the service, therefore, and for all that, for all that shall be done therein. Verse 30. And the first of all the first fruits of all things, and every oblation of all, of every sort of your oblations, shall be the priests. Ye shall also give unto the priest the first of all your dough, that he may cause the blessing to rest in the house. There are people running the year without blessing. Now it says, Second Chronicle 20, 20, Obey the Lord your God, and you shall be what? You shall be what? And obey his prophet, you shall what? Now God says, bring the first fruit. He didn't say when you bring the first fruit, I will release the blessing from heaven. He says, when you do it, I have handed the priest the right, the power of attorney. I have made him the custodian that releases the mystery of blessing. And then he will cause the blessing to rest upon you. He didn't say heaven. He's a priest. He's a man like you from among you. But God decided to put his system in the man. I'll show you. you see something as we go. Something very serious. So who caused the blessing to rest? Who caused the blessing to rest? Now, when does the priest bring the blessing upon you? When you bring your first fruit. How do you run the year without the blessing? Without the pronouncement? Our great patriarch in the person of Abraham. Do you know, read your Bible very well. The only reason why Melchizedek manifested was to bring confirmation of that which has been spoken concerning Abraham into manifestation. Because a priest must speak over your life. And the priest will cause the blessing to rest upon them. And every time he said, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord cause his face to shine upon thee. The Lord give, it, give thee peace. And the Lord cause his countenance to shine upon thee. Numbers chapter 6. Can't be in a place where there is no honor for covenant and expect and think you are secured. No. Now, the priest must cause the blessing to rest. I pray for you today as your priest. As you observe this covenant practice, may the blessing rest upon you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Exodus 23 verse 19. Exodus 23 19. Then after, the, after this, Exodus 34, 22, the first of the first fruits of the land thou shalt bring into the house of who? The Lord thy God. Thou shalt not sit a kid in his mother's name. So everything God is saying, bring it. He continues to say, bring it. Exodus 34, 22. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks. Of the first fruit of wheat, of wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. He said you must observe it. Let's go further. I'll show you some scriptures as we go. Nehemiah 10 35 was very clear. According to Nehemiah, he said every year you must do this. And to bring the first fruit of our ground and the first fruit of all fruit of all trees. Year by year. Year by what? Year. Let's read it from New Living Translation. Unto the house of the Lord. So it's a practice, it's a covenant ritual that must be observed every year. That must be observed every what? Every year. We promise to bring the first part of every harvest to the Lord, to the Lord's temple, year after year. Whether it be crop, from the soil or from our fruit or trees, we must bring it to the Lord year after year. Year after 
He said, but he has been quoting Old Testament, Old Testament. Okay, let's go to New Testament. Romans chapter 11, verse number 16. For if the first fruit be holy, uh -huh, the lump is also holy. And if the roots be holy, so are the branches. So this thing you do at the beginning is the foundation of the year. Once the root is secured, every other the branches will be secured. That's what, that's what the word of God is saying. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. You know, the devil will make you to dishonor God so that God will turn his back against you. The devil comes to tell you, say, ah, how can you give that money? You just take 10 million, the first money you are making and give it to God. You take that 20 million and the devil, as long as it becomes big in your eyes, that is a dishonor unto God. The one that owns everything. Hmm. There are church leaders that are suffering because they don't understand this culture of honor. They are serving God politically. But I am a bishop. I am this. You can hear some of them come to say, no, I don't believe in first. I don't. That's why they are struggling. Look at their life. Look at their ministry. They don't understand the covenant express way of wealth. Covenant is a, there, there is a spirit. There is a spirit. There is a spirit that provokes wealth. There is a principle that governs it. There is a thing that makes a spirit follow a family for over 200 years as they continue to follow them. There is a process of a covenant. And there is also a covenant that can make wealth travel from one generation to another. A wise man liveth riches for his children unto his children's children. That means a wise person knows how to use covenant to keep wealth and transfer it to another generation. Covenant is what sponsors wealth. And there is no wealth that is not spiritual. No one. No one. Somebody shout amen. amen. Are you sure you are here? Yes. I don't like the way you are responding. Somebody just make a joyful noise anyhow, anyway. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Honor the Lord your God. Go back to Proverbs 3. From the New Living Translation, 9 and 10. He wants to fill your bank account. Yeah. I'm believing God for strange money. I want to do some strange things with the kingdom. Mm, mm, mm. You not get I'm not talking to everybody. He said, watch, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Verse 10. Then he will fill your bands with grain. <laughs> and your fat will overflow with good wine. We are never born again to suffer again. We are born again to manifest the glory of God. For the world is waiting for the earnest manifestations of the sons of God. Now, what will be your testimony? That's why you see people, people are bishops, they, they are struggling. People are pastors. They are struggling with sickness, financial problems, everything. Because they have become too familiar. Do you know what I notice? I notice people that are close to pastors, they have strange problems. People that are close to men of God. And because of their familiarity to the grace, they keep having strange battles. Because they dishonor grace. Because of privilege or opportunity or whatever they have, have discovered that. Look at Judas, very close to Greece, died, committed suicide. Look at Gehazi, very close to Greece, 
become, became a vagabond, a man with leprosy. Look at Ananias and Sapphira. How they die? What will be your testimony? That you are born again. Everybody must not make money. Everybody must not shut up your mouth. Shut up, shut up. Where is it? Chapter 1. So how, do you, how is your evangelism workable? How do you preach the gospel? The best form of evangelism is signs and wonders. Yes. The best form of evangelism. Jesus said, if you will not believe in me, believe in, believe in the works that I do. Look at the evidence. Come on, sit down, sit down for a moment. Come on, come on, listen, listen. Don't tell me when I pack five, when I, when I pack um, uh, five Rolls Royce on the street, then I come out of it and I'm sharing handy. People will come to me on their own to take the handy. They will come, they will come, they will come. They will come. This is our church address, and they take. Join us tomorrow. I would like to see you. He says, sir, by seven, I don't reach the license. <laughs> Even though she will say, oh, I will go look for the place on Saturday so that we can not fail that one. Wealth is coming. Amen. Wealth is coming. Amen. Wealth is coming. Amen. Remember, I told you that the wealth transfer that is coming is for only covenant people. Those that will honor God with it. Those that will sponsor the gospel. Yes, sir. Yes. Come. Listen. That kind of thing that you don't need to tell your family to follow you to your church. You just call non so where are you? I want you to be in our church tomorrow. Uh, Tony, can you call me? I'm going to tell me if you're in our church tomorrow. Yeah. Uh -uh. Now you they give non so money. Now you they sponsor them. Why would they not come? Let me, okay, 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 let's solve this. Zachariah chapter 1. Zechariah chapter 1. Give me 17. Give me 17. New Living Translation. Say this also. This is what the Lord, the Lord of heaven, heaven's army says. The towns of Israel will again overflow with prosperity. And the Lord will again comfort Zion and choose Jerusalem as his own. Okay, go back to New, I mean, King James Version. King James Version says, through prosperity shall the gospel be spread abroad. Cry yet, saying, Thus hear the Lord of hosts, my city's true prosperity shall yet be spread abroad, and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion, and shall yet choose Jerusalem. True prosperity for the people to spread. True prosperity. Prosperity. God wants to give you wealth. Amen. God is not rich, God is not wealthy, God is not broke, He owns everything. A king of the earth said, Anything you want me to do, I will do it. Because the word of the king has gone forth, the head of John the Baptist had to go for it. Because the dancer said, I don't need car, I don't need. You say anything in your kingdom. John the Baptist is in the prison in your kingdom. So I want his head. Because the word of the king cannot be broken. He is bound by his word. The king had no choice, even though it was against. His belief to kill somebody. He cut out the head of John the Baptist in the platter and gave to the and gave to the young lady. How much more God in heaven? I have tasted poverty, I have tasted prosperity. And that, let me advise you. Can, can I advise you? Okay, let's go to Deuteronomy 30 15. If you want me to advise you, let's see how God advises us. Deuteronomy 30. 30 verse 15. See, I said before thee this day life and good, 
death and evil. 16. In that I commanded this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandment, and his statutes, and his judgment, that thou mayest live and walk, multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land without thou goest to possess it. Another translation says, he said, choose. He said, choose life and blessing. That ye and your children may live. Blessing. Listen, I have seen suffering in first, second, and third degree. Are you sure you are hearing me? Yes, sir. And I caught the secret. And I want to be poor again. I want to ask you, what is good about poverty? And the reason why poverty is wearing you like a garment is because one, you don't honor God. Two, your heart is wicked. When you see another person dressing well, instead of you to tell them, hey, I love your clothes, you are looking good. You say, ah, I saw it, oh, I wanted to buy it the other time. Uh, I, I not come buy I don't know what it is, go buy. Shut up! Yeah. You don't have money. Compliment me. Tell her, come, you look good, sister. You look good, brother. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Somebody is driving a nice car. So I have you to congratulate the brother. It's not about driving a nice car. It's not about driving. It's about poverty. Poverty. It's about poverty. No, it's about poverty. It's about luggage his best. Uh, you will never be poor again. <laughs> Wealth transfer. Listen. This thing, eh? It's not a gaman, gaman business. Yet. Let me tell you. Do you notice that many Yahoo guys, that they make money, they buy car, they spray money. In next two weeks or one month, they are selling that expensive wristwatch, 1000 Because, number one, the money is accidental. Number two, there is no spirit process that sustains the money. You know what they say in my place? Let me say it the way my father used to say it. He says, Onye isi, zoto dara. Ola cha cha dara, ya jay In other words, you be blind man, you know they see where Sherry follow. People wait, guy, they say, you come by mistake, matter. You come call, call the Sherry. You say, I'm not going to give anybody. Meanwhile, now let you blind. When you leak and finish, go pick another one by the side. Somebody shout amen. amen. Come, let's go, let's, let's go a bit further. Sit down. Sit down. Are you with me? Yes. You will never know, you will never know poverty again. Yes. Yeah. Once you become a covenant practitioner, that is the secret. The secret is light, and light is sweet. Revelation. Buy the truth, sell it not. Buy it. But look for the secret, keep it, become a custodian. Covenant highway. Now, who is qualified for you to give your first fruit, your first fruit, for God to accept your first fruit offering. It's not just giving it, uh, you are grumbling, giving it. You gave it to which is the right thing, but you will not get the blessing. Because you gave your heart, your heart. So number one thing that qualifies you for God to accept your first fruit, your first fruit offering and bless you. Number one is right heart. Second Chronicles 25 and verse 2. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Come on now. I don't like the way you are responding to me now. 
Oh yeah, let's read it together, everybody. Want to go? Read it one more time. To give offering, is it something right? Did Cain give offering? Is it something right? Was his heart was his heart right? Was his heart perfect? Every time your giving is your heart is not right with your giving, you have already you have succeeded in bringing cause upon yours. He and he did that. So every other person is coming out for first fruit offering. You are not even thanking God. God says you shall honor him with it. Father, thank you for giving me opportunity to even make money. Thank you for giving me opportunity to work. Thank you. I like it that you have sustained my life. I will use this to honor you. As you bless me, the more I will honor you. You did that right to give first fruit, right? To pay tithe, right? To give offering, right? But your heart is not right. Why are people poor? They don't have honor for covenant. If I'm here speaking right now, the Holy Ghost is opening mysteries up to make you, to bring you into wealth. It's about secret. Wealth is secret. It's secret. Now, as I'm teaching you this kind of thing, the enemy moves some of you outside to go and discuss why I'm here. You can't, you can't prosper. You can't prosper. You can't. You can't. Those who honor me are with honor. I can't, I can't be in the presence of the Lord for hours, all through the night without sleeping and downloading. And then you are praying for God. God says, I've answered you. And God says, if I will send a man that will download in secret. And the man is here to download secret. You leave your seats. Probably went into your car because you own a rickety car. Car that is not qualified to enter many garages. You are doing what is right, but your heart is not perfect. Holy Spirit cannot be moving and you are walking outside. And you are having a meeting. And he did that which was right. In the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. So every time you are giving, your heart must be right. I will enter into his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. And I will enter into his court with praise. And I will say, this is the day the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad. With joy shall you draw water out of the well of salvation. Be glad. And I say again, rejoice. Rejoice. Somebody shout amen. amen. So number one, your heart must be right. Number two, you must be somebody that work or do business. Work or labor. Work or what? Labor. It's very important. Very important. Very important. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 and number 10. For even when, even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any man should not walk, neither should he what? Eat. Give us from the New Living Translation. So if you, are not, if you cannot walk, don't eat. Don't eat. Even while we are with you, we gave you this command. Those unwilling to walk will not get to eat. You can't wake up in the morning. Everybody is going to walk. You put your earpiece, you are strolling through the estate with your jeans on the floor, on the ground. You're, you are sagging with your dirty boxers. Amen? One day, one day, it will be better. Now, some people, you will see that they will write posts. If I wake up now and let 10 million just appear in your bank account, it not go appear. Now poverty will appear. Do not appear. You can, you, you must walk. It's scriptural. Whatsoever the hand find there to do, do it. And do it well. You're okay, I've been looking for a job. No job, I graduated. 
Brother, keep quiet. Auntie, shut up. You can look for something to do. Amen? I'm not telling you what I have not done. There is nothing I did not do. The only thing I did not do, I did not steal, I did not defraud, I did not kill. In the street of Benin, we used to pick rubber. They call us rubber picker. You go to refuge dump. As I'm saying it openly now, people know me. Some were my classmates, some grew up with me. Some went to primary school together, some went to secondary school, some went to university together, some we live in the same street together. We used to pick rubber. My father is a carpenter. We used to pick rubber, pick aluminium. At the end of the day, we go to where they, where they sell it and they will weigh it. Sometimes it will be two kilo, three kilo. And some of my mates that used to join us, what they are doing, they will carry stone and put under their own. I say, I will not do this one, but I will go. If you come from Benin, there are places they call moat. Iya. You don't go inside here before moat, like borrowed pit. That is almost, that cross almost all the building. You will be picking rubber like a mad person. You will pick, you will be using lead to scatter. I was carrying it, using my hand to scatter refuse. Those days we used to go to Jerry Sapley Road where they are walking inside, carry concrete, carry this thing, leave school, go and do it, come back so that your, the little money your parents have, you add it to it. I was walking. He said, despise not the day of little beginning. Don't just sit down and wait for money to come. One day money will come. Parents, no matter how rich you are, when your children graduate, let them go and walk. Let your children work. That's the only way the family wealth can travel. Don't encourage your child that you know you are the first son or you are the second son or you are the first daughter that when you grow you are going to take inheritance. Because you are telling a child that, so that, that already knows you are rich. That all is enough to make that child eat, that child lazy. Walk. Walk. That's what you must do. You are a young man, you are not disabled. You, are, you can drive, go and learn how to drive. Start driving Uber. Drive Uber. You are a young lady. Don't believe that, oh, you are going to meet one man that will give you money. All your prayer point, God, send a man. I don't, I don't want to suffer. I want soft life. You see soft life, eh? you will suffer. Amen. Anybody that cannot walk should not eat. And let me say this to every parent. Once your son has become a full-blown adult, release them to go. Your children, let them go and work. You know when I left my father's house? By 21, I was done with university. At the age of 21. I left my father's house. I left my father. Came to Lagos around 22. I became the, the, the founder of this great ministry at the age of 22, 23. True. It's, it's true. It's true. By April. It's not by age, but I'm just telling you this reality. Do you understand where we are coming from? Do you, do you see the process? Did you understand that God did not just carry me from one way and I just appear here and bam? It's not movie, no be cinema or Nigerian Hollywood. 
That somebody died with native. The person now appears as a spirit wearing white and bada. Hey! No! Finally, as I round up with this, number three. Number three. You must have seed to qualify for harvest. You must have what? It's an unbreakable law. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. You must have seed. Somebody says seed. I can hear you. I can hear you. Why the earth remained? Seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. It's an unbreakable law that governs this world. If you have seed, you will have harvest. Not just, it's not just enough for you to have seed. You have seed, you must sow it. I will enter into a mystery how you, can, how you can bring spirit of wealth from Sunday to begin to show you secrets to wealth. If wealth, money, is by power, everybody would have been rich. Zechariah chapter 4. I'll show you two scriptures. I'm done. I'm done for today. I'll share the grace and let you go. But on Sunday, you, your eyes must be open. Zechariah forces quickly. Then uh, you get me after Zechariah forces. You go to First Kings chapter three. You will give me verse five. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, "This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit." God is saying, "Come, not because you have power." Mm -hmm. Do you understand? By my spirit. Listen, there are people that walk from January to February. They can't buy a car. Eh? There are people that work for 36 minutes and they become multi-millionaire. 36 minutes. You know, each run in heavyweight boxing, they have about 12 runs. And each run is three minutes. Are you aware? Three times 12 is how many? How many? How many? Do you know people like Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, uh, Canelo, Canelo Alvarez, uh, David Henney, and, uh, and uh, uh, Gavonta Davis? These guys, they, make, they can make $30 million in 36 minutes. And sometimes in, three, in, six, in nine minutes, the fight is over. Once you knock somebody out, the fight was, is over. The last fight of Deontay Wilder, within three minutes, the battle, the, the fight was over. How many minutes? Three minutes. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. There is a dimension to it. Anthony Joshua is going to fight in April. He's been dethroned as the heavyweight champion. He's on the process of rebuilding his career to be three-time heavyweight champion. But listen, these guys still pack our stadiums. He's one of the most marketable sports person, one of the most marketable boxers in the world. What does he do? There's a spirit behind the boxing. You don't understand? Somebody is wounding people and they are paying the person for wounding people. For knocking somebody, people out. That's violence. If you say a man and a wife get problem for us, maybe the man, the raisin, you say it's domestic violence. What do you not call somebody? Blood will be gushing out from somebody's eyes. They will still manage it. As long as the court man there says if the guy is still okay to fight, the referee will not stop. The referee will take the guy, come, look at blood. Are you sure he's, the guy says I still want to fight?
No, that is license legalized violence. His last fight in Saudi Arabia, Jeddah, he lost. But that guy went home with over 50 million US. Yes. 36, he lost it. He lost it. He lost the battle. If he decides to just become a journey man and never want to be serious with bosses, all he needs to do is to fight once in a year until he's 40 years old. He's about 32, 33 right now. So for the next seven years, he fights. Maybe he decides to fight two times. He can fight three times. And each of the fights, he decides to make $30 million, $30 million. So he's going to make $90 million every year. For the next seven years, he's making almost $100 million. We're not talking about uh, the, 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 the companies, the sponsorship deals that, run, that runs into millions. When the guy lost, he, he still became one of the richest boxer, richer than the person that defeated him. You don't understand. Now, dimension! That's where I want you to come into. It's a transferable spirit. God came to Abraham one day and said, Abraham, bring me your son, the one that thou lovest most, and bring it to the altar so that me and you can cut a deal. You want to enter dimension, you don't just enter dimensions because you pray. You enter dimension because you go further to the place where decisions are taken. Abraham, meet me there. You have been praying. But there is another platform I want you to meet me. But you can't come alone. You can't come empty-handed to this platform. You must bring blood that I demand. Bring me your son. The one thou lovest most. As long as to give God one million is struggling with you, you can't be, you can't be sustained as a multi-millionaire. What are you saying? The one that owns everything is giving you and you are struggling. Hold it. I will build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail. You see your name there? In any of the chapter of verses, your name there? Bring him. He brought the son. Not Ishmael. You see, everybody has Isaac and Ishmael. And God is in, listen, God is in need. Truth. Man is in need. But what man need, God have. What God needs, man have. You shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall what? God cannot serve himself. It's not possible. Abraham came to that point. When you get home, you have only 10 million naira. And you know God is the owner of everything. And God said, bring me your, your son, the one that loves most. You have two sons. Isaac and a person. Ishmael and a person. But human being, pass human being. Amen? If you like, be deceiving yourself that all men are equal. God send somebody better into your life. You say, I soldier go, soldier come. Barak will remain. When Major General go, Korofo will come. Yeah. Say, soldier go, soldier come. Feed Mashana, soldier, Korofo, and soldier. Cadet. Sorry, your respect for all the army people here. But I'm just trying to. It, it'll show you something. Now, now, the day you defeat greed in covenant, that day poverty dies. When you come to the point that whatever, you see the mother of Jesus, she knows this secret by the spirit. Whatsoever I ask you to do, do it. That's the secret. You come to that dimension, you have, you have, made, you have, you have, you have made it for life. Stand to your feet, everybody. Once you come to that dimension, whatsoever I ask you to do, do it. Now you have 10 million, and God said, bring Isaac, the one you love as well. Hope you know 1 million is, is money. Eh? But at the point you move 
despite the situation, you carry five million, seven million, and say, God, for now, this is my best. God said, this man can honor me. I can trust him more. As Abraham went, drop Isaac. Did not on the way waver or ask God, should I still go drop him? God said, come and drop him. Are you not tired of eating crumbs? If you can own a bakery, why eat, why eat one? Why go to where you'll be collecting one slice bread? Meanwhile, there is a dimension that can sponsor you to bakery owner. And it came to pass. Watch this. He brought a young man. Lay it on the altar. God! If you say I should I give it, I give it. After all, you are the one that gave me. Simple logic. He placed him on the altar. He did not say, God, should I still kill him? Uh, God, I, be, I know you are just joking now. You are just joking. God, I know you are just joking now. God said, kill him! He brought out his son. He did not ask God. He lifted up his hand. Was to cut off his hand. God said, hey, Abraham, stop. Oh. Stop! He said, Abraham! Now I know you fear me. Now I know you love me. Until your commitment, God is not sure of you. A whole almighty, omniscience, omnipotent, omnipresent. The one that knows. He said, Abraham, I'm just knowing now that you love me. It is your level of commitment that will make God know that you are a candidate for the next level of kingdom wealth. Many of you here are going to rise as multi-billionaires. Amen. Many of you are going to be multi-millionaires. Amen. With multiple streams of income. Amen. You will be too rich. Amen. When you bury greed with your God, this is between you and your God. Why are you struggling to give your tithes? Why do you struggle? To support the gospel. Watch. Now I know you fear me. Now I know you love me. I swear. Since there is nothing greater than me to swear with. With my name I swear. Abraham, in blessing I will bless you. In multiplying I will multiply you. I will make your seed great. And your seed shall possess the gates of their enemies. That means, Abraham, this covenant you enter today has sealed a transgenerational wealth. The Bible says, through one man, sin and death came into the world. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That means one man did something, everybody had to suffer. And through another man, wealth entered into his generation. Hit your chest. Say through me, through me. My, generation my generation will be prosperous. <laughs> Listen, say whatever it takes, whatever it takes. By, covenant, by covenant and by hard work, by hard work I will prosper. I will prosper. Amen. So, ah, Egbamio, this guy. Imagine God stood up from heaven. Imagine Angel Michael, Angel Gabriel, the angel of wealth, the angel called money, the angel of favor, all the angels, all the mighty angels. Imagine the ministry, the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. They open their mouth. Wow. Wow. This guy is about to kill his son. Imagine everyone was watching. They say, angel say, hey, God, God, please tell him to stop, tell him to stop. God said, Abraham, stop. Imagine the whole angels in heaven supported God and say, God, give it to him. <laughs> Lift up your hands. You will never struggle again. 